Hello, before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to receive updates when we upload new videos. Keep watching until the end of the video to see the interior shots, exterior shots and the full review. The 2020 Porsche Taycan debuts as an all-electric super sedan. After years of concepts, teasers, spy photos and rampant speculation, the 2020 Porsche Taycan is here. Although Porsche has been building hybrids for years now, including the 918 Spyder supercar, this is Porsche's first foray into the world of EVs. It's new and exciting ground for the German automaker. The Taycan Turbo and Turbo S will go on sale later this year, with other trims and a wagon variant based on the Mission E Cross Turismo concept following sometime in the next year. Yes, despite containing no internal combustion engine to attach a turbocharger, Porsche is using the Turbo and Turbo S names for the Taycan. Porsche says it's using the names so customers can equate it to top-level trims on its other vehicles. In terms of size, the Taycan slots below the Panamera and is roughly the same size as a BMW 5 Series, Mercedes-Benz E-Class or Tesla Model South. The design is nearly identical to the Mission E concept we saw a few years back. It's handsome and purposeful and distinctly Porsche. Don't worry, those fake exhaust tips on all the prototypes were just there for show. Both Taycan models are fully electric, sending power to both axles courtesy of a pair of permanently excited synchronous electric motors. These are expensive to use, but Porsche says the benefits, a compact design, good power density and good heat management, outweigh the increased cost. The front axle uses a single speed gear set with an 8 to 1 ratio. The rear axle uses a two-speed transmission, an unusual trait for modern EVs. First gear is used for acceleration. The Taycan shifts around 62 miles per hour, and top speed for both models is 162 miles per hour. The Turbo and Turbo S both make 616 horsepower. Using an overboost function, the Taycan can make up to 670 horsepower, while the Turbo S sends up to 750 horsepower to the wheels. Peak torque is 626 and 774 pound-feet respectively. The torque split is fully variable between the two axles. The Taycan hits 60 miles per hour in 3.0 seconds in the Turbo and 2.6 in the Turbo S. Note that those are both slower than Tesla's numbers for the Model S. The phrase Porsche kept repeating was repeatable performance, making the point that these cars focused on all-around performance rather than straight-line acceleration. That said, the Turbo does the quarter mile in 11.1 seconds. The Turbo S drops that to 10.8. Porsche cites a range for the Taycan of 450 km 280 miles, though no official EPA test number is available yet. Like most pure EVs, the Taycan's lithium-ion battery pack is mounted on the floor in a skateboard setup. At the back, the battery forms a T shape with cutouts in the floor to increase backseat footroom. Total battery capacity is 93 kilowatts. The Taycan uses an 800-volt charging system as opposed to the 400-volt setup in most other EVs. This drastically reduces charging times, though the 270 kW peak is still limited by the battery. Porsche expects that to improve to 400 to 500 kW as technology improves. In optimal conditions, the Taycan can go from 5% to 80% in 22.5 minutes. That is limited by temperature and the charging infrastructure. Porsche is working with Electrify America and Electrify Canada to increase the number of charging stations in North America. New Taycan owners get 30 minutes of free charging for the first three years of ownership. The limit was put in place to keep people from blocking charges. Porsche Charging Service is a system that uses one account with one bill to access roughly 2,700 charging stations. The center of gravity is lower than that of a Porsche 911, and a brief ride along showed the car moves and handles with grace. The Turbo and Turbo S both get three-chamber air suspension derived from the Panamera. Other Panamera parts include the control arms and bushings. Like many performance cars these days, the Taycan uses an electronic limited slip differential instead of a mechanical unit. Porsche dynamic chassis control is optional. The system helps reduce body roll, oversteer and understeer. The brakes are equally impressive. Both cars use 10 piston calipers in the front with 4 piston calipers in the rear. The biggest difference is the rotor size. Porsche says braking performance should be similar to the Panamera Turbo.
Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Subscribe to Auto TV.